welcome to tonight's meeting. Uh, we will start with a roll call. Let the record show that all board members are here in attendance. <laughs> um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, moving on to public comment information. We currently offer two ways in which the community can participate in regular school board meetings. The first public comment section on the agenda is for addressing current action items that are on tonight's agenda. These comments must be submitted by noon on the day of the meeting. The procedures for submission are posted on our website under Board of School Trustees. The second public comment section is for general comments and does not have to be specific to an agenda topic. If you wish to address the board during the general public comments section of the meeting, please put your name, address, and topic on a card and give it to Deb Hayes uh, at the start of the meeting. <clears throat> so if anyone has one, please give to Deb Hayes. Um, all public comments are limited to three minutes per individual with a total of 30 minutes allotted for each public for each public comment section on the agenda. Um, so we are we have made a change. Uh, we have moved the principal's report up to the top of the meeting. I'm sure the principals are thrilled. Um, so to this month's principal report, we will have Mrs. Linda Bevel from Eads Elementary. Thank you for moving us to the top of the agenda. We have teachers and students here, and it was their day off today, and they were very kind and gracious to come tonight to present. We are going to highlight our Exceptional Achievers program. <coughs> um, as you know, we added the Aspire program at EADS, and it really has been a blessing to um, watch the kids grow and learn to be part of our community and for our general ed students to get to know the students in the Aspire program. So Tiffany Popovich is going to share with you a little bit about what we did for Disability Awareness Month in March. And then we have two students from our K kids that are going to be talking to you a little bit about an idea they came up with to help the Aspire program. Um, so our team of um, exceptional achievers, which is Caitlin Falk, our uh, speech pathologist, Amanda Farner, our social worker, Rachel Zabani, our aspire teacher, Beth Dahlman, um, our past teacher, and Catherine Mark, our new um, school psychologist, all came together as a team. And we wanted to kind of create um, a disability awareness month that was going to be something we can carry on for year after year. Um, so I'm going to take you through kind of what our plans were. We had three different events that went on in the month of March. Our first one was our sticker donation that um, our social worker Amanda Farner led and every sticker donation went to um, Living with Hope. So those were for students with um, disabilities, walkers, wheelchairs in Africa. We got a great turnout of stickers and we were able to donate all of that to Africa. The next thing we did was um, we kind of did a divide and conquer. So our goal is for years to come that when starting in kindergarten all the way through fifth grade, our goal is to teach you about some of the disabilities that you will see at Eads Elementary School. So starting in kindergarten was deaf and hard of hearing um, we actually asked our ASL club in our high school to come and present and do centers for all of our kindergarten students. So that was super fun. I'll show you some pictures at the end. Um, in first grade, we had um, orthopedic impairment um, and our pre presenters were Joe Sitkovich and Jana Marich. Um, second grade was Down syndrome um, and that was actually led by some parents that have a child in the Aspire program well, to get um, parents even involved in our presentations. Um, third grade, we did specific learning disability and that was led by uh, Tammy Catalinic. In fourth grade, we had other health impairment. 
by Catherine Mark. In fifth grade, we had autism by Jody, Jody Chepica. So we invited all of our people that already work for Munster to come in and kind of present their um, knowledge about each disability to each grade level. So here are some pictures that we have from kindergarten, and they were doing a lot of interactive um, reading stories, and they were all assigned to them, learning their names, learning the alphabet, numbers, color signs. First grade, very interactive. The presenters loved it, and the kids absolutely loved every minute. Um, they actually, these were during our push-ins for our social-emotional groups. So they were used as our social-emotional kind of focus of the month of March. Um, second grade, this was a grade for Down syndrome, and they actually, the parents brought socks for all of the students because at the end of March, we actually had a sock hop for Down syndrome awareness, which was really cool. Yeah, they absolutely loved it. Um, it was really exciting to kind of see the whole school come together and um, really be aware of everybody that was in our building. Um, our sock cop, we had a DJ come out. We got to wear mismatched socks to represent those two chromosomes for um, Down syndrome <coughs> awareness. Had a blast. So it was the Friday before spring break. A lot of fun. Okay. Now we have two students from K Kids. I want to thank Mr. Ayersman and Mrs. Abrecki. They are K Kids sponsors. Um, they've really helped promote to what the students are going to talk about tonight, and they are really the big cheerleaders for this. So I would like to invite our students up. Town of Munster board members. My name is Olivia Forbiger, Vice President. school K kids. The swing into spring fun. Goal is to raise two thousand dollars. Inclusive swing seats allow all children to feel included and have fun at the playground. Regardless of their special needs or abilities, the swing supports the rider's head and neck, has a more robust belt system. Fundraiser is asking for students to donate towards this wonderful cause. The class that raises the most money will be with a movie night at Eid School. The students will be able to enjoy a movie at Eid after school, after school hours, including Thank you for your time and commitment. All good. I just gave you guys flyers and everything like that. Um, give them out to any of your friends. That so just to reiterate a little bit, the students came up with this idea to add more equipment to our playground because we really don't have anything that some of these children can play on. So they're trying to raise money for a, a bucket swing with a harness. And then I want to thank uh, Mrs. Fitkovich because she worked on a grant 
to get an amazing piece of playground equipment. We're getting a Sway Fun, and it's a rocker where the wheelchairs can roll, roll into the rocker, and gen ed kids and the, the exceptional achiever kids can all play together on one piece of equipment. So I want to thank her for working on that grant, and that should be installed and ready to go in the fall. And once our students raise all the funds they need for their swing, everything should be ready when we return to school in August. So thank you this evening. Um, do you have any questions about our program? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, um, before we move on to the consent agenda, if anyone would like to depart, please do. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your presentation. <coughs> All right, thank you very much. Moving on to section four, the consent agenda, Mr. Trippenfeldis. Uh, Mr. President, the consent agenda contains the following items, which I will uh, discuss briefly before making a recommendation. Item 4.1, the approval of the minutes from the uh, March 13th school board meeting, which are available uh, on the website and uh, viewable at this, this time. Also, item 4.2, the approval of the accounts payable voucher register as presented. Item 4.3, the approval of the payroll voucher register as presented. Item 4.4, the approval of the personnel report, which shows the following recommendations for employment, the following resignations and retirements, and then three professional development leave requests um, that are presented there. Again, available online and on the screen. Uh, item 4.5 is the overnight field trips, which are presented uh, to, uh, as you see for DECA and the Munster High School publications team. Uh, with that, the administration recommends that the board approve with one motion and one vote the consent, ag consent agenda items 4.1 through and including 4.5 as presented. Would any members of the board like any items to be broken down individually? All right, seeing none, uh, Mr. Trippenfellas already gave a recommendation. Um, so I will now ask for uh, board approval with one motion and one vote uh, to pass the consent agenda as presented. Schwartz Wolf, so moved. Dempsey, Schwartz. second. All right, so Kyle Dempsey with the second. Uh, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Oh, excuse me, is there any discussion? Uh, I would like to add one item. You'll see there is one retirement there for Barb Dwars from EADS, who also serves as our head nurse. I just want to take a, a moment to acknowledge her. She's been a faithful, uh, I can tell you, I don't know how we would have got through COVID without Barb. Uh, she's been tremendous in that role and as the head nurse, and so it'll be a great loss, but I wanted to just take a minute and acknowledge her because she is a, a wonderful human being and a wonderful nurse, and I'm sure Linda will talk about her forever, uh, but I just want to acknowledge that. After a long career, she's uh, going to be retiring, so we want to thank her for her service. I want to second, I didn't second the motion, <coughs> but I'll second those comments. Uh, Barb was wonderful. I, I had the good fortune to work with her when I was the athletic trainer, and uh, she'll be a tremendous loss. Fine lady. All right, any further question, uh, discussion or questions? All right, seeing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, next, uh, section 5.1, donations. Uh, back to, actually, uh, can I have a motion to approve donations as presented? John Doherty, so moved. Schwartz, 12 second. Uh, there's a motion and a second. Discussion, please, Mr. Trippenfellas. As you'll see displayed on the screen, uh, several for Munster High School, uh, for choir, obviously, for their uh, trip that's going to be taking place, and then a donation for girls track from the Booster Club. But you'll see those various uh, individuals who donated to the choir program. All right. Do we know how the choir is doing as far as fundraising? Mr. Nolan, maybe? or? Yeah, they're, they're ahead of track. Uh, Great. Our community always comes through. Great, thank you. Fantastic. Uh, any further comments or questions? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, 
The motion carries. Uh, section 5.2, fundraisers. Is there a motion and a second to approve fundraisers as presented? Dempsey, so moved. Is there a second? Smith, second. All right, there's a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Trippenfeldis. <clears throat> as you can see, there are several that are listed here that have uh, come through all through the high school. Uh, theater club, student government, boys and girls golf, basketball, a couple for dance, and a couple for speech and debate. A few of those will be happening, most of those will be happening this spring or early summer, and then there are two of them that are slated for the next school year as you, uh, as you see the speech and debate, team expenses uh, for, well, the summer camp is summertime. And then obviously the uh, canvassing for the chicken barbecue. We'll already advertise it now. <laughs> All right, any uh, questions or comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, section 5.3, board meeting schedule. Can I have a motion and a second to approve the board meeting schedule for 2023-2024 as presented? Schwartz-Wolf, so moved. Dempsey second. Dempsey second, hear ya. All right, there's a motion and a second. Uh, discussion. Um, I guess back to you, Mr. Trippenfeldis, or Mr. Is it Dawson? So th this schedule uh, reflects the, tr the traditional second Monday of every month, other than the January meeting, which is scheduled for the third Monday uh, in January, which allows our accounts payable, all the things that we have to do to get done when we just come back after winter break. So we, we've had challenges in the past on that second Monday after winter break uh, to get everything done in a timely fashion. So just moving that one meeting to the third Monday of the month. Otherwise, it follows our traditional schedule. Right. Excellent. When we proposed this change last year for the 6 p.m. meeting start time, uh, we said we would kind of reevaluate that. Has, and this is open to really everybody, has the 6 o'clock time worked out for everybody? Except for you. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the president. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Yeah. Um, I make it work. So no. No, it seems, like, okay. it seems like it worked well for everybody, and, and there's been honestly one time there okay. was an issue. So I think, I think we're fine to continue with six. And I, I just quickly, I mean, in difference to everybody's days, I mean, they're long days, and, and just one hour less to be here sometimes is kind of nice. So I know you love it here, but just, uh, <laughs> just throwing it out there. So all right, excellent. Any further quest comments or questions? OK, uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, none opposed, motion carries. Item 5.4, policy revisions and additions. Uh, is there a motion to approve policy revisions and additions as presented? Doherty, so moved. Is there a second? Dempsey, second. The motion and a second. Uh, discussion, now we go to Mr. Trippenfeld. Uh, obviously, you are aware of these. We, did, we went through these in detail at a work session, and then we had them at the last board meeting for further discussion if there was any. Um, and so now they're here for uh, approval of a vote and, and they will be online so they're available so if you want to read the 119 pages again you can go ahead and do that but uh, I think most people have had comments <coughs> have taken care of that and I think I think we mentioned this at, at both uh, instances but this is standard you, we, we do these policy revisions every year and there's just language that that changes or laws that change or various reasons so we don't necessarily hold these all you know, for, to have a three hour fun session, but right. it's just kind of how it happens. We try to do it twice a year if we can. And a lot of times we do it uh, usually sometimes after July and sometimes after December because a lot of laws change when they have their start time. So most of these were changes either to federal guidelines or, or laws or state guidelines or state laws. Um, so yeah, it's uh, pretty, uh, it's a pretty common and regular occurrence that we have to go through these on a regular basis. Uh, any further comments or questions? My only comment would be to thank Mr. Trippenfeldus because I know how tedious it's. It's hard for us to sit through <laughs> listening to it, thank and you. you have to go through. Well, it's just <laughs> wow. a lot of details, and sometimes it's changing a the and crossing that out, and and you find all those. So, thank you for doing all that. It, it, it well, make I don't. It easy for I us. find some of them, and Angie finds the rest of them. She needs some. Well, thank then thank you, well, Angie, so. too, because yeah. that's admirable job I would not want to do it so thank you your detail people <laughs> really nice all right uh, any further comments or questions all right moving to a vote all those in favor say aye 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, none. Uh, motion carries. Next, uh, item 5.5, Munster High School North Classroom Renovation Project 220707. Is there a motion to approve? Already so moved. A second? Smith, second. Uh, there's a motion and a second. We will move to discussion. I think that's going to be you, Mr. Begley. Yes, sir. Uh, this is going to be a project uh, to continue on improving the classrooms in the north end of the building. It's going to refurbish 20 classrooms, a lab, a copy room, um, as well as improve items from the 2021 uh, classroom project that were left off due to budget constraints. Uh, we're, we're going to put in some uh, vestibule, we'll put in some heaters in there, and then uh, some exhaust fans. In, in those areas plus some dimmer switches uh, in addition to this uh, we're going to replace some aging infrastructure with the pumps that pull the hot and cold water from the energy center and that's going to streamline that hot and chilled loop throughout the whole school uh, we're going to replace the fire alarm on the north side and continue to improve the technology upgrades on the north side of the building as you we did that whole project where we bought the uh, tech, technology equipment and then we made the idfs now we're going to start running that wire from the IDFs to the classrooms. That's going to improve the technology in those classrooms. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Nolan if he wants to add anything. I'll just, I'll, I'll just add this is a big, big shout out to Sean on this. Uh, we've spent a ton of time working with Jamie Lake, uh, trying to get this organized. This project to be, has become a lot bigger than we anticipated. Uh, when we met with construction companies for the pre-bid meetings a couple weeks ago, um, it was tremendously helpful to have them uh, have some eyes on the systems in there um, and you know just just so we're all clear I've tried to make this clear to everybody this is not really an anticipated summer project but a summer fall project because it's so large uh, so there's gonna it's gonna be a little uncomfortable next year as we move some teachers around so we can get these classrooms done uh, but we are gonna finally have more classrooms and get some of these science labs updated that are behind in technology and look uh, so it's got to get done. It's going to be a little uncomfortable to start the school year, but we're going to move teachers as needed, and we're still going to provide a world-class education doing that. One thing I'd just add to that, the um, Media Center Project, the Learning Commons, has given us some really nice spaces that we can leapfrog um, classrooms into, so it's not going to be as uncomfortable as it's going to be uncomfortable but not too bad. Maybe, maybe inconvenient is a better word. The product they're going to get afterwards is going to be well worth it. These are going to really update those north classrooms and make it a first-class facility. Well, I, I, I appreciate – are you through, sir? Sorry. I was just saying I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate you saying that now because I know come fall people are going to say, well, I didn't hear this. Why didn't anybody say this was going to last into the fall? Yeah, and I think the reality is it's just like we've, our biggest issues are going to be getting some of the materials, which are just becoming extremely hard to get. Um, there are blips of hope in some of these things. I know uh, some of the orders are 22 weeks out, according to Jamie Lake. In some instances, we've gotten them in eight weeks. I want to make sure staff are prepared, and I'm prepared for the emotional downfall that August 1, it might not be ready. Uh, there's nothing worse than that anxiety of people walking in being like, oh, this is all going to be okay. I would rather prefer that it, some of these classrooms might not be done, they might not be workable until we get some of this stuff done. Uh, there's some building constraints as we add the, the pumps and the chillers and stuff like that. There's just not a lot of room in the ceiling uh, to run both systems. So we don't really have an option not to start with air in some of these classrooms. So we can't, we were hoping to do some decommissioning and recommissioning through the project, but there's just not room in the ceiling to run run the lines that we need to run and it would cause an increase in cost that's just unnecessary for this budget so does this include the courtyard in any way no we're not doing the courtyard what we, we are doing the parking lot and we are doing some improvements on the drainage there that i think may correct the courtyard okay i know so, the drainage was an issue and that's not that's not causing any water in the building though correct i'm it's knocking just on wood <laughs> We haven't had any okay, issues. I'm just worried if we're doing new construction on the north side and we have any drainage issues from the courtyard. I know that was an issue last I'll, year. I'll comment on that, too. Okay. Luckily, the classrooms that have had water issues related to that will not be touched by this project because okay. of the budget constraint. So those classrooms, hopefully we can get that resolved before Excellent. we go back in and do this last big section of the north end of the building. And then hopefully that, that water issue will be taken care of by that point. Yeah, we'll so look yeah. to do those next set of classrooms <coughs> next Okay, summer. just wanted to be sure we're putting good money in the right spot. Okay, thank you. 
I think yeah, Mr. It, Mr. Gordy asked last time, uh, after this section, um, are we pretty much finished with the classrooms or we still have another? Classrooms, yeah. I, I, okay. For the classroom piece, uh, we'll have one more section in the north end to do. Okay. Um, about, 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 yeah. Yeah. About yeah. <coughs> oh. Okay. And then that'll be. Two fine classes. Yeah, and, and then I think the next challenge really to take on is updating the fine arts area would be the, the next area to go to. Okay. Yeah. Sean, is this including the, the parking lot in the front of the school? No, that's a different project. That's already been approved. hassey has been a board approved for that, and they'll start. And that, and that goes back to there is some, when we had the um, surveyors come out, they did find some invert some, some pipes that had some interesting pitches to them and we're going to fix those and that may fix the the drainage issue in the courtyard so we wouldn't have to spend all that money fixing a courtyard that really didn't need to be fixed and jamie looked at that jamie lake our architect looked at it and said let's try this before we delve into i think it was about a four hundred thousand dollar fix in the okay. courtyard thank you all right any further questions or comments all right seeing none we'll move to a vote all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Next, item 5.6, Eads, Elliott, and Munster High School floor replacement project 20230214. Uh, do I hear a motion and a second for this? Dempsey, so moved. Already second. All right, a motion and a second. Mr. Begley, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, this project's going to replace um, the carpet in 24 classrooms at Eads, three offices at Eads, and one teacher lounge. And then Elliot uh, will remove the carpet and replace it with a vinyl composite tile at 18 classrooms at Elliot, five offices, and one teacher lounge. And at Munster High School, seven classrooms and one office. Mr. Begley, is it all, all carpet all coming out? Are we putting any carpet back in? We're not. We're going to put in uh, a VCT that we can put a uh, seal it with a wax. And then we're putting a vinyl plank in the um, offices and in the lounge. And Dory's a big vinyl plank fan, so that's good. <laughs> Don't want carpet. All right. Uh, any further questions or comments? All right, then. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to item 5.7, School Town of Muncher, Munster Furniture Purchase 2023. Uh, do I hear a motion and a second for this furniture purchase? Schwartz Wolf, so moved. Is there a second? Dempsey, second. All right. Uh, one more time back to you, Mr. Begley. So uh, while we are moving all the furniture out of the rooms at Elliot Eads and Munster High School, it's a perfect time to <laughs> replace that furniture. Uh, so we'll be updating that furniture with, um, you know, working with the principals of, of items they've picked out. Um, we do have some more money that in, in the budget <coughs> that I will be bringing to you hopefully next month to get some more furniture uh, um, uh, approved for purchase uh, for replacing the teacher desks at the high school. And then uh, depending on how the money works out, perhaps getting some more furniture for Frank Hammond in the middle school. Um, does a lot of that old furniture just end up getting tossed? I mean, is there any kind of recycling or any kind of... Well, <laughs> the steps we go through is we uh, offer it up for the um, auction. And if it doesn't sell, uh, when I, I have uh, two custodians at the um, uh, bus barn that will disassemble it and put it into a dump truck and we'll just get the scrap money out of it if it doesn't sell at the auction. Any further questions or comments? All right, seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Moving on to item six, are there any items that may properly become, properly come before the board? None at this time. All righty. Uh, item seven, general information and discussion. Uh, item 7.1, textbook adoption for math. Uh, that would be Mrs. Bergeron. Yep. Um, I, we were hoping that we would be able to present a few texts up for adoption this year by this time period, but unfortunately with so much up in the air, um, we just haven't gotten there yet. So just as a reminder, this year we are adopting six to eight science and nine, I'm sorry, six to 12 science, math K to 12, and then social studies K to five. Um, 
for math elementary, K to five, we'll stick with um, our everyday math because it's been extremely successful. Um, six through 12 have selected um, at least one text, and so I wanna sit down with them and make sure that it's, it aligns to all the criteria that we presented to them in October. Um, and then I know social studies K to five, the elementary principals have worked to identify a text that the, um, with the teachers, of course. This is all done in collaboration with the teachers. So I met with all of the department heads in October. Um, we have a set of criteria to look for. We use edreports.org. Um, there's a long range plan. We're a month behind, but also with what's being uh, decided within, within the legislature, it's kind of hard to come to the board and say, we would like to adopt this $2 million in textbooks when we may have to finance that and it may not be possible at this time. So um, a lot up in the air, but I wanted to give you an update on our, on our progress um, and where we are. Any questions? No, I was just going to make a comment. So you, you mentioned that you set up in the air. That's pretty much specifically regarding the pending legislation um, about textbook adoption. And what at the outset sounds like a, a great thing, like, hey, you're going you're gonna to have textbook money, but we will have to, to carry any overage and we'll, we will have to pay for it. And as we've seen, that, that becomes a pretty huge lift. Um, the other thing I was going to say, and you mentioned it, I want people. I want to make sure people understand that you aren't deciding like, oh, these are just old textbooks, or oh, they have new pretty pictures. Like, there's a whole, there's a process. You discuss with teachers. You discuss with committee. This wasn't an overnight decision. Yep. Something everybody's putting a lot of thought and time and work and effort into. Yeah. So I just we utilize rubrics. That. We the yeah. department chairs um, attend a training with myself to ensure that they're know what criteria to use. Um, so there, it, it is a long and lengthy process, and just bringing in vendors and getting the materials and then the vendors having vendors come back. Um, our teachers spent a lot of time on this process and um, I'm thankful for them and for our department chairs for handling this because um, it, is a, it, it is very time consuming. Any other comments or questions? All right, uh, we will move on. Oh, I'm sorry. I. Uh, there, yeah, this is just information. We will move on then to handbook revisions for Munster High School for 2023-2024. Mr. Nolan. I will be briefer than all the policy changes that Steve presents, <laughs> uh, but some of these are kind of in the same vein uh, where we're trying to make sure that we're updating uh, some of the minor verbiage things. So I just want to be transparent with everyone. So the first and the, the biggest change in our handbook for next year is a proposal of <coughs> a new bell schedule, uh, not to just keep changing things to change things. Uh, but um, if you go over to page four there, um, this is our draft proposal for the bell schedule next year. You will see the traditional day is currently exactly the same as it is this year. We are also proposing uh, some blocking options to run on a calendar basis. And we will calendar these out because strangely enough, um, how often we have three and four day weeks in the school year uh, requires some balance here. We will do no more than two block days during a week at the high school, meaning that most likely we will look at a Wednesday and a Thursday as a block scheduled days. That'll give us an easy balance and a good balance of both traditional days and some longer periods for labs, uh, for some of those courses that require more engagement or deeper engagement a couple times a week. Um, but also make sure that students who miss school aren't getting days and days behind too often. Um, we will have one late start on Thursdays then at that 820, just depending on the calendar schedule, but we will calendar this all out so it's nice, clear, and transparent. Um, that way people know exactly what schedule we're following that day. But traditionally, if it's a normal five-day week, we will look at a traditional schedule Monday, Tuesday, and Friday and then a, that A block on Wednesday and the B block on um, Thursday there. As part of that B block, because it's a seven period day, um, you know, there's not a balance of four periods on each day. We are gonna add in a 50 minute period. We're calling it tutorial. Uh, this is going to be access time uh, for teachers to get in front of students, to make up exams, to further extend tutoring resources, um, you know, <coughs> maybe catch a kid up on some work uh, provide some RTI two or three sources in that area. Uh, and we're looking at some systems 
um, digital systems that can allow students to either choose those schedules and teachers can assign students to that schedule and it automatically records attendance. There's some neat programs out there that aren't too big of a cost actually uh, that can help us with that. So um, this is like a little flex time built into the middle of the day. That way busing can't be an issue. Kids' sports schedules can't be an issue. Uh, but this is truly needed is some of that access time uh, in that tutorial. Students will be assigned places to go like a normal spot and then they'll be pulled from those areas to go where, where needed. Any questions on the <coughs> schedule? And again, if it's a three-day week, we'll probably run three traditional days. We'll look at some of those four-day weeks if we want to do two traditional, two block, but we'll probably lean to some traditional four-day weeks. Uh, using that traditional schedule and use the block really on our four day weeks just depending on where things fall actually um have you had a lot of feedback on this from staff from i mean i know this is probably publicly the first time you're you're really showing this exact framework but uh in terms of staff and we started these discussions last spring after um after the board named me principal um uh, because it's something that uh, I found very valuable at the um, um, at the middle school in certain instances, um, and the Mike Wells before me had a committee and they'd done a bunch of research on it. So these discussions on block scheduling had been really going on, um, you know, quite some time at the high school level, and a lot of this stems from back in the pandemic when we went to some blocking for the first time in a, probably the school's history um, to kind of mitigate some of the the movement of students. And, you know, we had people who really like it. We have teachers who really like it and see some benefits from it. And we have people who really don't like it. Um, I think there's always anxiety and change. I think some of our teachers are a little bit nervous about the change and what those periods look like. But as we've really focused on professional development this spring on how to teach during those longer periods of time, teachers have started to kind of ease into, okay, you know, this isn't 50 minute lecture, 50 minutes of the kids sitting independently. I have to really engage my instruction in these longer periods. Our science teachers are ecstatic for it because <laughs> it's been one of the missing areas like in our, on our AP curriculum is getting in and doing some of these labs that require uh, 90 minutes of full on engagement uh, to meet the AP curriculum. Uh, and, and those have maybe been some lacking areas there. Our PE teachers like it. It's an opportunity to actually maybe do a full game or some, some more traditional workout activities and not feel like kids have to rush in and change and then get back out on the court. Um, you know, uh, our English teachers are actually more excited about it than I thought. Um, they really think it's an opportunity to really kind of break things up and provide some remediation or some workshop stations for students to do some uh, writing workshops. So. There's some a lot of positives. I've heard from parents who are very nervous about it because students sometimes worry about what day it is and responding to that. But once I've talked to those parents about calendaring it out, it's not going to be a consistent thing. Um, they've they've been much more better about that and calm about that. Thank you. I'm also very glad to hear. I was going to ask about professional development because I think that was a concern right after COVID. Was we kind of threw the teachers into it had to happen covid yeah. blah. but i think that's great to hear i think there's a different way to teach and it's in how to use the time wisely so thank you for doing that yeah i mean we're trying to get better at instruction across the board and you know this you know as i've i've, I've learned is if if you've got bad instructional practices the block just makes it worse you know because you're in there longer and so you've got to really make sure that those teachers who maybe struggle with some of those things have the tools in their toolbox to make you know adjustments and, and and change some of the things that they're doing um, you know blocking works really well at the middle school there's a lot of research behind that there's not as much at the high school level uh, but like I said there are some things that we're not able to do because of 47 minute periods that you know really kind of grind through the school year there so we need some longer chunks of time to get some of those things accomplished Any other questions on the schedule? And I will try to have this all calendar out by July 1. Um, that way, you know, we can, if we want to bring this up at a board meeting and make it publicly available, but I will send it out three million times in emails to parents and we'll make sure everybody knows about what the calendar looks like. And we'll have to make those changes as snow days come up and uh, emergencies come up as needed. 
All right, I'll go through the purpose. Um, I'll go through some of the other changes there. Uh, just quickly on page seven, there's a note about building time. Um, I know you might not be able to keep up, Steve, but I'll, I'll try to slow down. Um, we've been l getting kids in the building at 735 this year. Um, we had in policy seven, uh, but we're going to stick with 735. That, that's, that's when we want kids in the building. So building opens right at 735. Uh, the media center, there's some kind of just changes in general in that section, point blank, looking over at page 10. Um, and a lot of that just realigns with the new development of the media center. Uh, and so just a realigning some of the things that they're doing in there with, with uh, some of the information that we're providing uh, to, uh, to students there. N nothing ma major, uh, but just some realignment in language there. Uh, moving over to page 12. Everyone's favorite, summer reading. Um, we have canceled summer reading. We let students vote, and they voted it out. No. Um, <laughs> if I don't win an award, like a student award, for getting rid of summer reading, I, I mean, I should here, right? Yes. Um, but uh, this, this has kind of faded in instructional practice for a plethora of reasons. I actually am on the other side of the fence. I think summer reading has a lot of good merits. Um, and I think we tried to make adjustments over the years and the, the English teachers have just really struggled to effectively implement summer reading policies. It has not been in practice for a couple of years now and we're not gonna bring it back at this point in time. Um, there's just too many complicating factors with, with things going on for summer reading. So I'm sorry some of the board members' children had to go through some summer reading at some point in time and suffer those things. Um, but moving forward, we are um, we're not going to be implementing a summer reading project. Questions on that? Uh, Elisa Castro, very upset. Yeah, well, as I saw her on my run before uh, after, after work today, you're I, on the, I, I you're could on the other tell. side, though, right? What's that? You would like to see it continue. You know, I I I I think there's a lot of good merits to summer reading programs. There's not a lot of research that supports that it actually is effective. And I think the implementation practices that we've used have lacked good, good instructional design. And so I think if we want to bring it back at some point in time, we need to have some <coughs> deeper discussions about what we're truly trying to get out of summer reading and how we can get that out of summer reading. What we've done historically over the past, and again, we have changed things a million times over. It, it, it was not increasing summer reading for students. It was really rushing to try to read these books at the last second and then give them tests to determine if they read these books. And sometimes it was penalizing a lot of our students and students who were moving into the district maybe weren't getting a fair shot at these things. Um, <coughs> and it just, it, it really kind of complement, it complicated a lot of things. So I think if we want to go back to looking at some type of program to encourage reading over the summer we need to look at some more research on how to effectively do that but our current what we've done at Munster is not really increasing what we wanted out of summer reading those texts are complex texts that need support of the teacher while reading and that's the tough thing you're asking students to read a couple books over the summer and um, you know there's there's not a lot of and I don't want to bring up the the word science of reading but there's not a lot of science behind reading that shows that independent reading translates well to uh, critical thinking and understanding independently and having those discussions and those engagements really need to take place and we were trying to cram that all in like a nine-week period and then assess these students over that and it just was not working for many of our students so um, I think we need a, a complete reevaluation of that. That's going to take a couple of years to do that. We have, like I said, we have not implemented a summer reading program for several years now because of COVID, and we just haven't brought it back. So we're going to close the book on it. Oh, wow. Good riddance. Brutal. <laughs> nice pun. Brutal. <laughs> um, any other comments on summer reading there? Again, I'm just going for favorite principle with students. That's all that matters <laughs> to me. Uh, moving over to page 20. 20 there. In the dress code section, um, we have made a minor change. This is actually something we discussed earlier in the year, and we have implemented in practice. Um, 
we are being a little bit more culturally sensitive uh, to some of our students' needs here in the building. Um, and so we are taking a, a little bit more broader stroke when it comes to hats and head coverings. We just are, we don't want to see hats or head coverings that would um, affect any types of security policy. That would be those that are covering the face or covering the, the eye shield from our camera views and those that are covering the ears so that we can ensure students aren't wearing earbuds throughout the building. And I know the earbuds are a big thing because kids love wearing them, but it is a major security issue for us in our effectiveness to communicate with students in an emergency. So we really have to have kids, and I remind them constantly on the announcements, we really need kids to not have earbuds on, especially when they're moving from class to class. We need to be able to effectively communicate with kids quickly in case there is an emergency in our building. And they put those earbuds in, and a lot of times they have no idea what's going on other than a visual cue. So, um, so to kind of get in modern times with some of the sensitive issues with head coverings, and we've seen more students come in with some, some need to have their heads covered up, uh, we're, we're kind of broadening that stroke a little bit there to take care of that. <clears throat> Driving to school, we were charging a $5 tag fee, but that tag fee cannot be a flat rate. It is flexible with our ID passes. So we just took that out so that we're not kind of chasing our tail because it might be $325. It might be $4 just depending on how many tags we have to order uh, to cover um, parking fees at the school. But, um, you know, we can only charge a tag fee according to the state when it comes to parking. Any questions there? Electronic devices, um, you know, Boyan and I actually had a huge debate about this uh, because he, he really thinks kids are walking around with portable radios still and <laughs> portable DVD players and tape decks, but we are going to pull out some of that language when it comes to uh, DVD players, tape decks, um, and portable radios. So just to kind of modernize that, although if it does become a trend coming back, as Boyan is predicting, these portable radios are coming back, we might have to revisit this policy, but just some up, just a minor update there uh, for the times. Uh, page 26, looking at disciplinary actions. Um, we've been using uh, Lake County's teen court quite often for students um, as part of our suspension diversion program. Uh, this is a, um, a court system that's run uh, in Gary. Uh, through the crisis center uh, we can assign students to that as a diversion <coughs> to suspension and or recommendations to the munster police department for behaviors on campus or within the community and they have to go through kind of a court process of their peers and they either assign them community service but they also are automatically assigned to so many services on the next team court for the next kid so and a group of peers does that so we've used that um, system quite often in some of our cases that we've tried to keep kids in school for like attendance issues um, or for diversions to keep kids from having to be uh, prosecuted for criminal type things that are minor in nature, um, such as attendance infractions um, or maybe a tobacco fine or something like that. So we're trying to use this as a, as a means to help kind of divert some of our suspension diversions or criminal actions there. So we just delineated that out in, in our process. Questions on that? Moving over to page 32, just some changes in guidance and counseling. Lots of little verbiage changes in there. We had words like parents that we tried to change to families to make that, make sure that we're covering a broader swath. Um, you know, we required kids to have a lunch period. They're automatically having a lunch period in our modern schedules. Uh, we updated some of our career center busing type situations that we've struggled with. Um, and we've made some changes throughout when it comes to making sure that graduation pathways aligns with some of the language in, um, in our graduation uh, course, course stuff there. No major changes in uh, policy or anything there. Updated websites. Um, that were linked to certain state requirements. Uh, moving over to page, really it kind of starts on page 35 when you get into grade point averages, all that stays the same. Uh, student progress reports, we don't send report cards anymore, we send them a transcript, so we just made some changes in there. Um, and just some updates on how those will all be calculated in with the system. Final exams, a little bit of policy change in there. Um, 
in a practice. Uh, we, w in the past, we've really been like a stickler that students couldn't take their final exams uh, early, and we're still saying that students can't take their final exams early, uh, that they have to take it within the window, but they can work with their teachers if for some reason they can't take it on the last day or this, one of those days in there, if their schedules get backed up, they miss a day of finals because it was becoming a huge undue burden on the guidance department to come in constantly in the summer and give final exams. We were basically becoming the final exam cohort for the summer and all because a student maybe missed a final exam and we were trying to track these kids down and we think it's better obviously to get kids to take their final exams with the teacher the teachers can grade them and we can get grades updated as opposed to trying to do this in August. Uh, so just a little bit of uh, change in practice there. Any questions or concerns on that? That will never hurt a student's grade though. There'll be some way to make it a fair exchange. I remember during COVID that was an issue because kids would get COVID during final finals and then they couldn't take any of their finals. Yeah. So we just want, I just want to make sure that this policy doesn't hurt the students so if you look at the policy this is a good we'll spend a second on that we're not changing anything when it talks about the teacher really has the power to work that out with the student and we're trying to give a little bit more power to the teachers to do that as opposed to just divert this exam somewhere down and then throw a zero in the grade book and pray that someone tries to track the kid down over the summer uh, to get that but this the teachers have a couple options they can do an alternative assignment they can <coughs> exempt the student from the final exam a hold harmless type situation or they can have the kid take the exam so those are really the kind of the three choices in there um, or worst case scenario they have to have approval from administration that could do an incomplete and schedule the exam for a later time but we really want kids to take the exam do the alternative assignment or exempt the kid from the exam um, myself as a teacher I always encourage the exemption one uh, or I'd work something out with a kid where we would average something out or give them an alternative assignment uh, because it was usually in the kid's best interest and in my best interest as opposed to worrying about where some kid is over the summer uh, to do that. But we do want the students and the teachers to work that out, you know, okay. course. Uh, moving over to page 37 there, easy changes. Uh, Pre-AP from those honors courses in there uh, that are being converted over to pre-AP and then principles of engineering is now <coughs> called digital electronics. Minor change there. 38 uh, in the grading system there it said student progress is reported once during each semester the final grade is issued at the end of the semester will appear on the official transcript it says students will receive progress reports at the end of the first nine weeks transcripts are issued at the end of each semester again we're mailing out transcript copies unofficial copies so students can see their collective history and ensure that we're have good records and then families are encouraged to track student progress performance through power schools parent portal like we're, we're not going to just keep sending out transcript stuff we're, we're hoping to kind of keep those up to date and then we'll send those out at the end of each semester <coughs> moving into co-curricular extracurricular activities now we do have a few new clubs that are slated there Chinese culture club which will be learning about aspects to Chinese culture traditions and mannerisms uh, language food and history we have a fashion club which mr. Melby won't ever be a part of but I encourage him to join um, but this will be for students to really kind of engage with design management, sustainability, and the history of fashion. We have a lot of students who are interested in those types of things, and they will be crocheting. So this might be a Bill's, Bill's, uh, Bill's uh, spot. We have Indian Culture Club, <coughs> uh, which I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really excited about. We have a huge Indian um, population and students who have an off-campus uh, club through their religious group. Uh, and they do lots of amazing things that I've attended over the years, so this will be a chance to bring them on to campus to maybe do some of those events. So prominent holidays, uh, practices, food, culture, and those types of things as well, highlighting those. And then the NFL, not the National Football League, and I'm sure that's why this has to be changed, but the National Forensic League is now changing their name to the National Speech and Debate Association, so there's a change in that honorary organization for students who qualify for that. And finally, I know I'm boring everyone to death, but
So we're on to page 48 where some changes in athletics. We will be adding boys volleyball, which is an emerging sport next year. And we have added girls wrestling, which is emerging, emerging sport um, this year um, as practice uh, in line with IHSA. So those will be um, two new sports, first time in, again, probably 30 years for the IHSA to be adding sports. Um, we did make a small change in there. Palms still was showing up for some reason, and we know it's not palms, it is dance. Uh, so there's a few little changes in there. Um, and then just some change alignments in practices again with scholar <laughs> athletes and how that's calculated. Uh, this is what we've been doing for several years. Um, you know, like students who earn an all A, we're, we're basing it off a of GPA, which brings in more kids um, and, you know, kind of includes more kids and those types of things. So it's a 3.6 GPA gets them scholar athlete awards. Uh, so a few little changes in policy there for athletics. Any questions or concerns? You're going to take the fashion yourself instead of Mr. Mel Mr. Melby? I need it for sure. <laughs> I get dressed in the dark usually. So, yes, I will be I will be at Fashion Club as needed because embroidering is interesting. So, any other questions or concerns? All right. All Those right. are there, and uh, if you have questions, let me know. All right. Thank you very much, sir, for that riveting presentation. Uh, all right. So moving on to Section 8.1, the financial report. Uh, Mr. Melby, Director of Financial Operations. Fashion report. Mr. Nolan didn't realize I get the microphone after he does, yeah, but there it is. I will not stoop to his level. All right, the first thing I want you to look at is the financial update uh, packet that I put in front of you. This is something I'm planning on doing every quarter if time uh, is willing. I talk about a lot of these things throughout the year, so I want to put it down on paper so you can see it. Uh, the first part are our investments. Uh, so I did our history from 2013 all the way to, uh, through 2022. And then the number in green is where we're at so far in 2023. So that's just a three-month number. Uh, as uh, all of you know, the CD rates are doing very well right now. Um, so uh, that's good for the schools when it comes to that. Uh, underneath that, you always hear me talk about uh, we use a laddered approach. Well, this is what it looks like. And uh, basically, Almost every month or every other month, we have something coming in, so then we can reinvest it, or if we need it for expenditures, then we'll use it for expenditures. Obviously, uh, if you look at the funding source, if you're using a geo bond, you're probably going to have a spend down time, so you can only use a portion of the money that's in there. But um, this is how much we have invested. On the second page, uh, I went over our expenditures compared to our budget just so we can go over. I know we talk about this, but now you can see it. Uh, so you'll see it every quarter. In the education fund, our total expenditures were uh, just over $7 million for the first three months, but that was including transfers. Uh, if you look at that number, it would be about 26.5% of our overall budget. When you look at that as a quarter, well, that's slightly over 25%, so you would be a little bit concerned but transfers do not count against your budget. So the number underneath, I wanted you to see that because a lot of times people lo look at the cash sheets and they get a little confused on it. Our, uh, with You take out the transfers, transfers we're over 21%, but we're definitely under 25%. There are some months that we know we're gonna uh, spend more money than others, right? Our three pay months, usually January, we spend more money, uh, especially in the operations or referendum fund, and then December in all of our funds, we usually spend a little bit larger, larger amounts of money as well. Uh, so as you know, I'll constantly track that and make sure we're within our budget. In the operations fund, uh, you'll see that we are slightly over 20%. That is not including our encumbrances moving forward. Uh, when I get to the cash sheets, you'll see we finally did buy our electric bus from 2021. It came in. Uh, so that actually counts towards a different budget, a previous year's budget. We encumbered that and we carry it forward. I'm not going to go over all those numbers, but if we took that into account, we were actually under 20% as of right now, a quarter of the way through. But we do know we have $1.2 million in encumbrances in the uh, operations fund, so that money will go uh, as we plan. The referendum fund, you'll see that we are over 26%. So again, that's a little bit alarming, but I'm not worried. The numbers are exactly where I thought they would be. 
We have a three pay month in the first quarter, so that's gonna drive the number up. And also remember in January, we have our insurance payment, which is a very large payment. It's actually our second largest payment out of everything. People are number one, our insurance is number two. Gas and electric is in there as well. So um, that's uh, around a $700,000 hit in one month, so that's going to drive it up. We don't have that expenditure every month, it's only in January. So I am very confident we will be, at the next quarterly report, we will be well under 50% of our budget. With that uh, being said, I will look at the, um, the different funds in the education fund. As I said uh, previously, uh, it was a three pay month, so all of our payroll certified, non-certified, and subs were much larger than normal. It's because instead of two pays, there are three. When there's three pays, you spend more money. Um, in the operations fund, as you see, if you look under purchase of buses, you will see that large purchase for the electric bus. Within the next six months, remember we get reimbursed Oh, I want to say 300, and, yeah, over 300,000. I want to say it's around 325. The electric bus was actually slightly cheaper than a regular bus after our reimbursement. But there's, a, it's going to be a couple month lag. So it's within the next six months we'll receive that money. But again, that was expended out of the 2021 budget. Uh, you can also see uh, when you look at the March uh, interest and in accounts, we did have one of our. Uh, investments mature, so that's why you see a much larger number there than you normally see. Uh, and then finally for the referendum fund, there really is nothing out of the ordinary, just again a three pay month uh, that drove those numbers up. Uh, we do not like to lose money in the education fund in any month, but I will tell you in every three pay month from this uh, time on, you're going to lose money in that uh, in your cash balance. In the operations fund and referendum fund, remember you're gonna lose money almost every month unless you get an early tax draw, which we did ask for this week. Hopefully we find out and then we can get our uh, early tax draw in May and then we get our normal, the rest of the money in June. All right. And without any questions, that's the financial report. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Mr. Melby? <laughs> uh, Mr. Melby, I just had one. Um, Something to address, uh, about a month ago, there were a few bank collapses that I'm sure the public is aware of. In the wake of those, there was some concerns that there would be a run on regional banks, and I understand our support of regional banking is strong um, in our district, um, but that kind of raised some flags with me. I reached out to you, and I just wanted to know if you'd care to comment on some of the results of the conversations that you and I had regarding those issues. Right, well that's a, a great question and any extra information is great information. Uh, when you look, I'm gonna go a couple different prongs on that. When you look at our the first page of the financial update, you'll notice our investments are with five different banks. We're spreading our money around. Now we do bid that out, so the, uh, the best bidder is going to get the amount, but it's great that it's going to several different banks. We also reached out to uh, our main bank, the bank that we have most of our money at, uh, they assured us that we are, that bank is fine and everything's doing well. He also assured us that our school money is insured and we're fine no matter what. Uh, he also said he, uh, the president of the bank said they would come in and talk to the board if need be, as well as the superintendent. So if you want that set up, that can happen as well. Thank you, sir. I didn't know if, if you guys were, oh, I mean, just because I'm in that every day, I, I heard some of those things and I just felt like, it was something we could address, but if that's something you guys feel like we need a deeper dive on, um, we can discuss that. So. Yeah, as um, uh, Mr. Castro mentioned, there are, I think there's several smaller banks in California where it started, right, mm -hmm. that were closing, uh, were going bankrupt. So uh, it was obviously a serious concern. Yeah, so thank you for, thank you for looking into that. Um, and that was all I had, anyone else? All right, um, moving on to administrative reports. Assistant Superintendent reports, uh, Mrs. Bergeron. Um, as we stated last month, we just wanted to make sure we gave you an update on those, on the new courses and um, placement within those courses. So if um, Ms. Laird wants to come up. You also have a handout, I believe. Um, there was one included in each board member's seat it's red. Okay. Yep, that's it. Um, so the first slide is the different <coughs> courses that our sixth graders coming in.
Math 6 is our general education math class. Students are taking 6th grade math standards. Um, our advanced math 6 is a class that combines 6th and 7th grade standards in um, this class is for students who are um, potentially newly identified as high ability as fifth graders, not taken any sixth grade math yet, um, or um, any other students um, that have shown because of their NWE score um, that they would be successful at accelerating their math. Um, we have this course set up so that we can provide the support to the students that are newly identified moving up that grade level. Um, knowing what the standards look like from fifth grade to sixth grade is really important. A lot of algebraic standards in math. Um, and so this course lets us, and it's already what we currently do, um, lets us put that support in place where they're learning sixth and seventh grade math standards. Um, the honors math six course is um, sixth graders that are taking seventh grade math standards. Um, these students have already completed sixth grade standards. Um, and then uh, when students are identified in sixth grade, a small percentage of students are in the sixth grade students are allowed to jump, if you will, again and can enroll in the sixth grade algebra class, but they're cohorted to that class consists of sixth and seventh. As a sixth grader, you would enroll in the sixth grade algebra class. Um, and then on the next slide is our seventh grade math courses. Math seven um, is a class takes seventh grade math standards, seventh grade math standards. Um, one thing that's different on here is we're proposing to double. in double blocking uh, our sixth grade math classes and we think that our students would really benefit having the consistency of math about um, a double blocking system. Also offer, continue to offer that pre-algebra class for the honor students. Um, so again, this is for sixth and seventh grade students that are accelerated in their math. Um, and then those students that double jump, if you will, they've already been high ability <coughs> and then we allow them to take um, pre-algebra as sixth graders. Algebra, um, we put the word honors there just to let you know that it's an accelerated um, entrance into that course. So these are seventh graders that have already been high ability. So as an eighth grader, <coughs> algebra course, we are also proposing to double block this for the same reason. Um, we would like to double block the seventh grade math course as we've seen some success, a lot of success with our students who have had double block in math classes. Because this is our general education population, there's a wide range of students that are taking this course. Our students who will be taking honors will be taking a pre eighth differently going into the pre a pre algebra for next school year cohorted together um, algebra and it's slightly different pre preparation so we're going to keep them cohorted together but it's the same course and that's going to allow us to provide extra supports to the different Algebra honors as eighth graders, their next step would be to take pre algebra for our students that would have at some point in their math career accelerated twice and are taking a course that are that laying the courses out this way for you um, shows the different um, and how the students will. I wanted, oh, sorry, I was just gonna mention one, one other thing. One, this has been done in collaboration with the entire math department. 
Um, so this isn't a, an administrative decision and Mr. Ridgely's back there. He was, they've all been part of the discussion and their feedback is what had created some of the entrance criteria. Um, I also wanted to mention just for us from a statistical point of view, last year our fall to spring NWA scores um, were at the end of the year for sixth grade was 7.7. .7. This year, we've double blocked. We've put in some intervention periods for seventh grade, and it's actually increased by five points to 12. So we, from the beginning to the middle, and I wanna think, I wanna say that the average growth across the country for a um, NWA score for math is at that grade level is more like a seven point, maybe a six, um, definitely not 12. So we've seen a lot of success. Also in the seventh grade last year at this time, we only had three points over the whole year in growth. This year they're up till seven. And again, that's for we did intervention um, courses. So essentially the kids who needed a double period of math, we're getting a double period of math. And then for our eighth grade, we had this substantial growth this year. We're, last year at the end of the year, we were at 3.6 points um, in growth. This year they're at nine. So we've had some tremendous growth where we definitely needed it. So kudos to our teachers and our administrators for making that happen. So the only time any of our Wilbur Wright students would end up at the high school to take a math course? Not at all. Not at all. We're gonna house we have, it ourselves. So that cohort of students that are single and double accelerating <laughs> is growing. Um, so our projected numbers for our pre-AP geometry next year is 16 have a class for that um, and we anticipate that number to continue to grow how is to offer it in-house because successfully accelerating and so so uh, the pre-AP geometry student <clears throat> doesn't make 80% by December they can stay in the class in that that course at Wilbur Wright they're not put down to whatever the regular geometry is um, so uh, you know what I mean okay so uh, this has happened to me so I'm just <coughs> questioning like do these kids then do we have an ability if someone doesn't do well in the pre-AP geometry that they have a place to go for math in the second semester um, we would have to look at how to schedule that okay. um, but if they don't uh, if they're not what I want to say to you is we're gonna, we as a math department have been discussing various checkpoints for that. Okay. To try to make sure that doesn't happen. I know, because technically it shouldn't happen, but it happens. It happens. So, I, um, so we, we've been talking about where are we gonna check for that and what structures can we put in place to help them? Because by jumping or double jumping, okay. the child has been sh shown that they should be successful where they are. Right. Um, so what supports can we put in place for that? But in the event, so this year, for example, we did have to move some students from honors to an algebra class, um, right. and we restructured our schedule at the semester in order to allow them okay. to have a class. Um, so I think it's something that we would have to consider, but we're hoping by planning this intentionally all the way up <coughs> and planning how we're gonna support them in step track, if you will, um, that we will see significantly less of that. Okay, and there is always a position for a, what I like to call the anti-estogic rule, that if you need to be tripled up, you can be at the high school for that. Okay, that's I, a compliment, anti-estogic, wherever you are. Okay. And I think that's important for us too, is that yes, this is, this is what we, this is the current structure. Um, however, we always have outliers and right. we'll do whatever we need to do to make sure each kid is I just with provided the double with block the and the high school on a different schedule, I just, yeah, I know it would be a handful of kids, but all the kids are important. So, okay, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. All right. Additional questions? No? I just wanted to also just add, we are in the conversations with the high school on pre-AP professional development for our teachers. Um, there's a number of different tracks in order for that, that pre-AP professional development to occur. So we're trying to figure out the best venue whether that is sending teachers there's an online version there's a variety of different ways to do it all of this that we're talking about has a big caveat which is may 2nd based on what happens with um something that is being voted on may 2nd um all of our staffing decisions you see double block throughout this double block won't happen 
um, depending on how things go May 2nd. Um, staffing decisions will have to be made on May 2nd based on what happens. And so even who we sign up for PD is directly related to what happens on May 2nd. So May 3rd is when a lot of things start to happen in terms of scheduling PD for the future. All right, um, Mr. Trippenfeldis. Just a few. Um, uh, one thing I just want to keep you updated on, the administrative team is also working on next year. When we talk about staffing, we've had our meetings with the principals about needs, and uh, they've shared with the superintendent. We're looking at those, and Brett stole a little of my thunder there. We're, uh, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Heller has given us some um, duties to fulfill where we have to look at planning next year if the referendum is successful on, on May 2nd or if it's not. And uh, I can just tell you it's not pleasant. Um, on the second one, it's uh, when you're talking 60-some certified staff, not even talking about classified staff, but certified staff that are supported by that, it's very difficult to do that. And so some of those things that we're working on, although uh, we ho we're hopeful for the best, we have to plan for the worst. And so those are things we're going on. And, and uh, yes, we're already looking at ADM for next year as well, too, so I'm doing my first sets of runs and uh, Debbie keeps me excited uh, giving me an update every day on the number of kindergarten enrollees we have um, I haven't checked today because we're closed today but uh, uh, we're tracking a little bit less than last year uh, but just a few less than last year as we go almost day to day looking at so but we've got some original numbers there and then one thing I did want to end with is uh, obviously we haven't mentioned yet tonight but I want to use t uh, right now is we did lose a family and I called a family member uh, one of our teachers at the high school who was new to the position but with us for a year or two and in, in subbing uh, Virginia I passed away obviously uh, from some medical complications and I just wanted to first of all acknowledge her uh, although she was a short time employee with us um, missed and uh, and I also wanted to acknowledge the high school um, the amount of work that they did to make sure our students um, were taken care of um, I can't compliment her uh, her husband enough his email to us was just tremendous and cared more about the kids than himself which um, is one of those things that you just it's what made her a special person made them a special family um, but I didn't know if Mr. Nolan I wanted to give up a little, few minutes if you wanted to say anything or not at this time yeah I'll just be real brief uh, not a fun thing to wake up to on Thursday morning for our kids and as a principal of a school to lose a uh, staff member, uh, Virginia had been with us uh, as a permanent sub and then took over a, an opening in, Engl in the English department. Uh, at the last second, she was transitioning to teach, working on her teaching degree and had a background in English, professional writing, and she did an amazing job in the classroom. The kids really, really engaged with her, really cared for her. Um, and, you know, unexpectedly, she was a young lady. Um, uh, and then so it was a tragic loss for a family, tragic loss for the school. Uh, we provided a lot of grief counseling on Thursday. We plan to bring um, bring our counselors back together um, tomorrow morning just to remind them we might have uh, some still some needs and we might still see some needs over the next couple weeks here. Uh, but um, I'll send out some service. I got the service information today. They are planning a service uh, here in town for her. She's not from the area but from Virginia. Uh, so they're planning a service back there and a service in the area. I'll send that out to the board members uh, this evening so you guys have that. And I just did want to, I wanted to compliment the high school and the middle school, uh, how they reacted in a moment's notice to make sure that our, our students were taken care of. Um, I was there with the faculty meeting and Mr. Nolan having to, to give that information, which is the worst information you can give. And then I was with the first period class. I actually sat outside and listened to Mr. Snyder and Miss T Miss Terry, who's one of our guidance counselors, work with those students. We have tremendous people. And, and Mr. Yovanovitch, I called him very early in the morning, and he made sure his counselor and social worker were at our buildings. Uh, and we had the, all of the individuals from the high, or the elementaries ready to go if we needed them. So just, I wanted to give a lot of kudos to those individuals, very hard situation where they had to put their emotions on check to make sure that other people are taken care of. So I uh, want to thank you guys. And Mr. Nolan, seriously, thank you, because I think I asked him a few times, are you OK? And his answers were always, yeah, I'm fine. And you could just tell he was that way for the kids. So just wanted to mention that. And also uh, give some, uh, again, some definite acknowledgment uh, to Virginia and her family <coughs> for the uh, tremendous asset they were at the time. So thank you. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Trippenfeldus. Um, 
Moving on to the Director of Exceptional Achievers Report, Mrs. Svitkovich. Not sure if this, there we go. I'd like to start off by. One more time. I'd like to start off by echoing uh, Virginia Ibe's presence and her effect on the students over at Munster High School. My daughter had her and echoed that she was one of the best English teachers that she ever had. So even if a teacher has only been in a building for a year or two or is doing a transition to teaching program, sometimes they're natural at being a teacher and affecting children. So we are going to miss her greatly. Um, on a positive note, I'd like to move on to compliment and praise Tiffany Popovich and the team at EADS, not only from the Exceptional Achievers Department, but the entire building for looking at the fact that we were within the Disability Awareness Month and really made an effort to look at different abilities and educate the district and the school on how students with disabilities um, can interact within a building and how they are affected by their differing abilities. So just again, kudos to you and your team. I'd also like to praise Lisa Rudy for now we're in Autism Awareness Month and she's taking an initiative over at Elliott Elementary School to make uh, autism the center of the of attention for Elliott Elementary School where one of our structured learning programs is located right now. We have disability, or speaking of inclusive practices, we have IDEA, which is coming up April 27th. So mark your calendars. We have our second annual diversity dinner, again from 6 to 8 at Munster High School. And lastly, I want to praise the ASSET program. ICASE is the Indiana Council of Administrators and Special Education. There is a teacher shortage across the entire nation. There is a specific teacher shortage within special education that is problematic. In other teaching shortage areas, you can hire teachers under what's called an emergency license. Within the IDEA, which is the um, Individuals with Disabilities and Education Act, we are not able to hire teachers in that regard. We know this. We took an initiative across the entire state and developed a program that is now nationally recognized. Other states are looking at our program for how we are supporting teachers getting licensure within special education and supporting an alternate license within the state. Linda Ramos is our first uh, asset teacher. So again, asset stands for aspiring statewide special education teacher. It is a program to support teachers who have all licenses in any other teaching background to then get a mild interventions or an intense interventions license through a one-year course that is sponsored by ICASE, again, the Indiana Council of Administrators and Special Education, and other states are now looking to our state for how they can also assure licensure for their teachers. So kudos to Linda Ramos and her getting additional credentials to her license, and we will be uh, referring other teachers in the future for it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and moving on now to the Director of Operations Report, Mr. Begley. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to thank um, uh, the principals and teachers uh, and the maintenance folks that we've been planning all these projects and bringing them together. And it's uh, great to come to our planning meetings and our planning sessions that um, you know they've all done their homework. Uh, they come well prepared. Uh, they know the spaces that we want to work with. And um, they have a wealth of knowledge of many years of working in schools and working with students that uh, they bring a unique uh, perspective to the planning meeting and bringing all those ideas together uh, to put together a project. And it's uh, been great working with Jamie Lake, our architect. He, he really kind of captures all those things. Um, the, the principals have made some really timely decisions, and I'm, I'm starting to know them. I brought one tile to Mrs. Uh, Bevel, and she goes, that's it. Um, so we've been working through, uh, getting to the point where we're reading each other's minds. <laughs> so it's been... It's been a lot of work, but it's been it's been fun. I'm looking forward to getting these from concept to an actual finished project that our, our students will be able to enjoy. Uh, moving on to uh, food service, we'll be meeting with, um, uh, we'll be doing our pre-bid meeting, because um, as you know, I've said this for the last few meetings, uh, We after five years, you have to put it back out for an RFP. Uh, we have five companies that have showed interest in uh, being our food service provider. Uh, that also includes Chartwell's, our current one. Um, and then we have uh, going to transportation. Uh, the e-bus is here. It is fun to drive. Uh, we got the I, the Indiana State Police inspection has been completed. 
uh, we submitted for plates. We did some training because there are some things you definitely don't want to touch with uh, with first responders. So they're they're learning how to uh, react if there was any sort of accident with the e bus. Uh, and then we're waiting to install the radio, and then we'll get out into the rotation. Pending any questions, that's all I have. Any questions? No, sir. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to Section 10, uh, individual public comments. There are no individual public comments. All right, uh, individual board member reports. Mr. Dempsey. Thanks, Mr. Castro. Uh, the PTO presidents did not meet uh, in the month of March, so nothing to, to report there. Um, I was able to participate in my first uh, We Are Munster Awards a few weeks ago, uh, and that was a lot of fun to, to, to be part of that. Um, and last, I just want to say thank you to Ms. Bergeron and, and Ms. Laird for this one. She, I know a lot of work went into this this page and a half just because of the fact that I know how much we as a board have talked about uh, the, the, the math changes in the curriculum and this puts it uh, it's a lot easier to, to look at and to, to comprehend so thank you guys for all your hard work on it. All right, uh, Mrs. Smith. Uh, thank you, I wanna echo Kyle's comments to both of you because I raised a lot of concerns about what was proposed and some of the concerns I had and I feel like this addresses many of those concerns and I think will be in the best interest of our students moving forward. So thank you for all of your hard work and for listening not only to my concerns but those of parents that were brought forward and taking the time to meet one-on-one -on -one with them. I think that helps a considerable amount in understanding what where people are coming from. So thank you for your time. Um, with that said, um, I had the opportunity to be at the Wilburite PTO dance in um, <laughs> April, or is that early April? Beginning, I don't even know when it was anymore. <laughs> um, but 600 students appeared and it was a fantastic evening. Uh, kudos to the Wilburite PTO and Mr. Jovanovich and the staff that attended and all the kids that came. It was a wonderful event. Um, to bring all those kids together and it be minimal chaos is, is um, a lot said. I also attended Snow Flurry and can't express how wonderful that was to see that event back, not only for our children, but just seeing the staff interact and Officer Greist and the high school volunteers that came out and supported that as well. That was wonderful to see that event back and in action. Um, so I know there's many things going on at all of our schools, but um, it goes without saying how wonderful um, so many volunteers and our staff that make it all go well and a well-oiled well machine. Um, with that said, I attended the Parks Board meeting um, as I am the representative from the school board. We held a work session uh, last month and it was to kind of consider all of the priorities and projects and opportunities that are happening in the town of Munster, parks that are existing, parks that need to be improved, um, parks that are yet to exist, such as in community estates, um, where there needs to be some type of park developed at some point, as well as looking at all of the things that come up from parents, such as some type of facility at some point to have everything under the sun in it and where that would possibly go in Munster. So we had this opportunity to brainstorm all of those things and evaluate those options as well as then prioritizing them and then they will be further discussed and look at what's within budget, what opportunities exist um, now to maybe build upon and what needs to be created from scratch. Um, we also are evaluating, continuing to evaluate the golf course and the buildings out there as well as the view, which is the building that is no longer able to be used. So that's up for discussion about whether that will somehow be removed or some other steps moving forward in the future that will be considered at some point in time. So it's been interesting. I've learned a lot. <laughs> and um, it is um, a nice opportunity to be part of that board on behalf of our school board. So thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Doherty. Thank you, Mr. Castro. Um, I'm scheduled this week to be a community reader at uh, Eads and Elliott. Um, I just hope the Joint Commission does not show up at St. Mary Medical Center in Hobart tomorrow. If that happens, um, 
I'll have to reschedule. But uh, looking forward to Tuesday and Wednesday if, if that doesn't happen out at, at St. Louis. Um, earlier uh, last month, I testified before the House Education Committee regarding a bill that would require schools to have AEDs. I testified before the Senate previously. The Senate author asked me to come down and testify again uh, to help her out in front of the, the uh, House Education Committee. <coughs> it seemed like there was unanimous support uh, at, on the House Education Committee. I wish they thought like we do on other issues. Uh, we still up in the air on textbooks. Uh, one thing that has passed, apparently, that had uh, bipartisan support and just a point of information for parents that uh, parents will be of seniors will be required to fill out a FAFSA uh, going forward. This is something that's already required over in Illinois. Uh, had large bipartisan support in the Indiana legislature. There is no penalty if the parents don't follow the law. They can sign a waiver, and even if they don't sign the waiver, they, nobody's going to be forced to do this. Just the same, they would like it to be done because Indiana students are passing up millions of dollars in Pell Grants as it stands right now. Um, and then finally, the, it looks like the legislature will pass a 4% increase in education funding, which is wonderful, but it's a, a biannual budget. And the second year of the budget, it will be a 0.7% increase, which would result really in a budget cut. So if you're inclined to do so, please reach out to your state legislators, House and Senate, or if you have friends in other districts, uh, or if you work in another district where perhaps uh, your representative or senator, where you work as a member of the majority, uh, to speak to them about really what would be a budget cut. I will not be here for our meeting that's scheduled on April 24th. I will be at Indiana University instead for the, pres the first presentation of the Joe Willis Scholarship. Uh, you may not know Joe was a Munster High School trainer. Uh, scholarship is named. Excellent. Uh, Dr. Schwartz-Wolf. Uh, I sit on the strategic planning committee for the board, and this year it's turned into a subset called the portrait of a graduate, so we've been working on that. Um, it has, we're to the point now where we all have homework, and I'm glad you reminded me because I have homework to read tomorrow to come up, we have a meeting tomorrow at 4 o'clock, uh, and we've gotten information and opinions from all stakeholders, you've done such a great job of really reaching out to everybody. If you did not get contacted or didn't put, have your input, shame on you because you had an opportunity. Um, so now we're really trying to finalize those top three to five characteristics of what we want our graduates to look like and then do the trickle down from there. So uh, it's a great steering committee group. Um, and I was also going to um, Welcome, uh, Dr. Heller, to the Doctor Club. It's it's quite prestigious. You're going to love it. There's a cloud. I'll tell you about the meetings later. Um, but really, he uh, defended his dissertation uh, last week in the midst of all the other things we're asking him to do. So, uh, really, congratulations. It's one of the things that we really were impressed with you when we were interviewing, and we're glad to see that this come to fruition. Um, and we'll get something special for you at some point. But congratulations. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, congratulations, sir. That's that's fantastic. Obviously, um, not just because it was a uh, quite an accomplishment, but just everything that's going around here and being a dad and life and oh, moving across the country and a lot of stuff going on. So awesome. Um, <clears throat> nothing much as usual to report from um, the Redevelopment Commission. Uh, two meetings, but again, those are literally like two minutes long, um, and they're just, uh, I'm, I'm non-voting on top of that, so I just get to s get up on the dais and just watch everybody vote and go home. So nothing exciting to report there. Um, I just wanted to, to mention the see, seeing the kids, I mean, we've seen it a couple times now where we're seeing initiatives from kids doing service in our communities, and it's their ideas, it's their drive, um, which is, it's just so cool. This is such a, uh, an important 
commu- a, a service is so important in this community, and you see it from the adults, but ki- to see kids taking that initiative is just, is just phenomenal. And I thought that was neat um, in terms of special education and exceptional achievers to kind of describe all of the facets of, of what that entails. I don't think people realize how many different areas you have to address um, under that umbrella. So that was great to have that opportunity for us and I think for the, the community to see, um, to see some of that. Uh, I was able to attend the last IDEA meeting. Um, again, Mr. Yovanovic, Yo- I've, I've said this before, but I, I think it's a fantastic program. And the, the thing I've, I've said in that meeting that I love most is we're not checking boxes. We're not just there talking about, you know, theoretical things. We're trying to come up with ideas to put into action, to address discipline, to address culture, to address needs in our community. And we've already seen some of those things put into, into place. Um, we're doing a second uh, dinner upcoming that Mrs. Svitkovich, Svitkovich mentioned. <clears throat> and just seeing real action come from that committee is fantastic. So um, please, please keep that up. Um, you know, one other thing, Mr. Trippenfeldis, you, you mentioned the, the staffing needs, the staffing wants, you have those conversations. We'll see, hopefully we can address that positively. But I say this all the time, I want parents, I want the community to know it's not luxury items, you know? These, a lot of these positions are because of need, are because of change, are because of, are because of this. Like, you know, we're not just trying to put something on paper and, and change a name. We need to address how we're going to get this done through, through um, development, through professional development, through education of our teachers, making them comfortable. Mr. Nolan mentioned changing to block scheduling, making sure that everybody is comfortable with that, even at the administrative level. You know, sometimes people think we're top heavy and a lot of people up here do a lot of work. So I just wanna thank everybody for all the time and effort and work you guys put in. Um, and I know that you guys here are here burning the midnight oil a lot, so thank you very much. Um, and lastly, uh, just the loss of a teacher is so devastating, uh, a younger teacher and something shocking like that. And you know, to hear that her husband was supportive of the students, to hear that the staff came through and and stepped up when they needed to um, and that we're still addressing this is really meaningful and just speaks to what kind of district we have what kind of building leadership we have what kind of administration we have um so yeah just just keep doing what you guys are doing i mean we're not standing still this this district continues to change um and and everybody's willing to put in the work so so thank you so much dr heller thank you appreciate the uh the thank the uh, appreciation on the doctorate um i'm just glad it's over i just keep saying that i'm just glad it's done um got that done now we just got to get through may 2nd and then life's gonna open up again um i'll, I'll echo a few things first uh the middle school dance the snow flurry um, some of the things that are going on at the middle school so fantastic i had no idea what a snow flurry was um but i went and it was it was really great my daughters both loved the middle school dance um so to PTO and to the Wilbur Wright administration and the staff there for putting those events on was fantastic. Um, I have to echo um, what was said about Barb Dwars. Very happy for her, but very sad for us. She is um, kind of the go-to when it comes to any new um, initiatives or things that are going on in terms of health and safety for our kids. So we have big shoes to fill in terms of that lead nurse position for the district. to, speaking about Mrs. Ibe, our, our teacher that we lost, um, I don't know that we all had a great amount of time to get to know her, but she definitely made an impact on a lot of people in a really short amount of time. And I have to echo everything that was said about the, the work that the staff at both the middle school and the high school did specifically to, to meet the needs of our students and our staff who are suffering um, from that loss. It is never um, a fun or easy thing to have to go through and they really stepped up and took care of things to make sure that our kids had the best possible stability as they were learning about the loss of somebody they had come to appreciate so um, she will certainly be missed i had the opportunity to be a middle school eighth grader last week i spent my day shadowing my new friend manny Um, had a great day i learned an awful lot Um, 
you know, we talked about the block schedule and you wonder how um, teachers respond to teaching on the block schedule. I saw teachers utilizing every minute of that block schedule period and not just um, doing what we always fear, which is teaching for 45 minutes and giving 45 minutes of homework time. No, they were using lots of transition time. They were doing a fantastic job of keeping kids engaged for that entire block schedule period. Um, I didn't know much of what was going on in Spanish class. I wish I um, had taken Spanish uh, and taken it more seriously when I was learning it way long ago um, because I was a little bit lost. Um, Mr. Torres did assign me one day of in-school suspension. He wrote that I was disrupting class with my fame. Um, I don't know what that means exactly, so I have yet to serve that in-school suspension. Um, you can call my wife and get that scheduled, I guess. Um, uh, we have a faith leaders breakfast uh, coming up this week. We've invited the different faith leaders from all the different churches in Munster to come over and just spend a little bit of time so we can learn a little bit more about them and they can learn a little a bit more about us. Um, not sure how many of them will show up, but we've, we've put the invites out to, to all of those folks on Wednesday this um, week to meet with them. I got to go to my first Munster baseball game on Saturday. The result was not what we were looking for, but it was a great time in the sun uh, watching some baseball with our high school um, boys. Um, I'm also participating in the Town Comprehensive Planning Committee uh, later this week. That is the, the committee that's kind of making the long-term decisions about what Munster is going to look like as a town. Uh, lots of interesting conversations happening there. And I did want to make sure to point out SpongeBob the Musical at Munster Theater. Those tickets go on sale April 15th. It is, uh, the show is May 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. So get your tickets. I think it's going to be a popular show. That's it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to announcements, future board meetings. Our next meeting will be a special board meeting on April 24th, 2023 at 6 p.m. And then our regularly scheduled uh, board meeting uh, will be held May 15th uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, that is all for announcements. Is there a motion to adjourn? Schwartzwolf, so moved. Smith second. I was going to say no second, no go home, man. Let's go. <laughs> all right, there's a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed?